Hi, everybody. This is my second video uh, where I'm going to attempt to do um, anal analyze a reading. Um, this is the second one in the series. If you haven't already watched the first video, I'll put uh, a note in the uh, description, the URL for that, so you can go back and look at it. In that video, I it's 30 minutes long, but I'm able to there's a lot of information in there that I don't want to repeat in this one because, of course, it's it's really uh, just a continuation of the same video. I'm watching the John Edward video. This is from 2020, probably, or late 2019, because it just says three years ago on the uh, YouTube video link that it was uploaded then. Uh, the Kyle and Jackie O show. So it's happening in Australia. John Edward has a very strong connection to Australia. Let's mention this very quickly that in 2020, uh, we had COVID and Australia completely shut down. And John Edward was not allowed back into Australia. He had to cancel all of his events that he had scheduled. For some reason, he didn't know that there was going to be a, a COVID outbreak. He doesn't mention it here. He doesn't mention it anywhere that I know of. Um, not mentioning it by name, but mentioning that it would be a worldwide you know, an event that would kill tens of millions of people and affect every part of our economy and nothing mentioned. So um, he had events scheduled all through Australia and all of them had to be canceled because he didn't know any better when he made the event. So uh, let's just put that out there right there. Okay, so um, the only thing I'm gonna mention right now is that if you wanna watch this section of the video before I go and anal analyze it, I'm putting the link in the description. So you might pause me, go and look at the video, run it through, it's seven minutes long. It seems to be the showcase of the whole event. So it's a little bit longer. It's gonna take me a little bit to get through it. I've made some notes, I've listened to it one time. I was thinking of doing this live, but I can't imagine because I'm constantly going back and forth, back and forth, trying to make sure I get exactly what he said and looking things up on the internet to see if um, rates of death and things like that. So it would just take too long. But if I did this live, sure. But just because it's just you and me just hanging out together, analyzing this video. Um, also, let me mention that we are not to make fun of the sitter. They are grieving. They are don't know any better necessarily. Yes. Um, if she really wanted to, she could probably do a um uh, find this information because it's all available out there for you to find. And um, so I kind of think of it as a willful ignorance. This is another woman. Um, these The mediums prey on women. So notoriously, most people who are seeing a medium are female. And so that's, that's the way that is. So what we're looking at is uh, this is a call-in show. I guess it's a popular show, the Kyle and Jackie O show in Australia. And John Edward is on set and they don't see the sitter. She's not there. She's calling in. She's on the phone and she wants to talk to him and she's very nervous. And one of the first things I want you to notice is her voice. Um, you're getting an idea of how old you think she is. She's obviously has an Australian accent and, and that helps you, um, Remember, this is all he has. Now, we're going to assume that he does not know who this person is. He didn't have, you know, uh, somebody had him um, put the person in to the call link um, or that he doesn't have a whole lot of information. Now, I will pause and tell you that I do think there is some information that's coming through and you're going to see it right off the bat, the first first hint. So please put your comments in the in the comment box underneath this video. Um, I'm really interested in if I miss anything and what you think of the video, I may do a whole bunch of these or I may just, you know, do three and that's it because nobody's watching. I have no idea if people really want to see this kind of thing done. So let's go to the video. Right, um, right. And the same thing with people who are who are older. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but is there anybody that we're going to talk to that has a husband or brother who passed? I don't know. Actually, uh, oh, actually it, Caitlin, Caitlin, who's on the you? phone that can hear us now, that is breathing on air with us. Is that you, you there, Caitlin? Oh, sorry. 
I'm like You're right. Hi. Now, did you you lost your husband, right? I did, yes. John, this may have come through right now while we're talking. Yeah, as, okay, I'm talking John. as I'm talking, I got nervous for a second. I didn't realize she was on the line because because if I, I, was gonna, I thought it might have been somebody behind me in the studio. Right. Um, so, Caitlin, does the month of March have a meaning to you? Okay, so let's pause right there. First off the bat, they know who's calling. They know that the person has lost a spouse very clearly. So John Edward is just like, does anybody, is there going to be a, a uh, father or a husband or whatever coming through so that's just that doesn't mean anything to me that doesn't make me feel like he did anything special right there it's just saying something um the 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 host for the show says he's our we know that the person on the line right now has a husband that passed over okay so we have foreknowledge there already we do not know what else is written down we do not know anything else about it but let's just assume he doesn't have great detail but there is a screener when you come on to these radio shows that want to make sure that you're articulate that you're um not a troll that you're not going to come and vandalize or whatever you know you go through a process and they ask you a bunch of questions that do so so um it is not unusual for the screener i'm sure to say who is it you want to hear from and maybe a little bit more information about yourself or something. I don't know, but it's not unusual. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is John Edward is setting it up in a way, and I didn't catch this the first time I heard it, but I just heard it right now. He said, if it wasn't her, it's somebody behind me. So this is another out that psychic mediums use, is they are willing to... Um, to get a hit or to give them an out for the miss they might have, they will blame it on other people in the room because there are people all around them. There's not just the two hosts that are there and the caller on the phone, but there's people handling audio and there's people handling cameras. We're watching on a camera. So there's camera people there as well as probably visitors and so on. So how John Edward is able to channel just to the person he's specifically supposed to be channeling to, anybody's guess, right? If he can get it over the phone, he can he could say, oh no, actually I think that was the cameraman that was their person came through. So there's always an out, right? Okay, so let's continue. Yeah. Okay, so they tell me to talk about the third month March. So the third month March to me would be like birthday or anniversary, and they're making me feel like there's a husband anniversary. Okay, there's a husband or brother energy that Okay. Again. He picked March. Well, he said the third. So that was a way of maybe even getting out of it by, you know, oh, it wasn't March. Okay. But what does three have to do with anything? If she didn't hit on March, he could have said, oh, there's three, I don't know, the third of a month or something like that. He could have given some other kind of indication, but he didn't have to because he said anniversary or birthday. He didn't say whose birthday. He didn't say whose anniversary. He didn't give a date. He just said March. Also, March is one of the longest months. There's 31 days in March. He didn't say February, which is 27, 28, 29 days, right? 28 or 29 days. He said March. So as we go through these, I'm wondering how many how many months he picks that are 31 days versus how many he picks that are 30 or 29 or 28 days. Just interested in that. Besides, also birthday or anniversary of who? Anniversary of your first kiss, anniversary of your wedding, anniversary of your engagement, anniversary of your parents, anniversary of your in-laws. We already know it's a husband, so we know there's a marriage involved here somewhere. Could it be a birthday of the dog, him, her, parents, children, who knows who? A birthday anniversary of a work day, like where you worked. It could be an anniversary of a celebration in your town that always has some giant anniversary and it's, it's meaningful for them or something. It could mean anything. And there's only 12 months to choose from. So having a birthday or anniversary in a random month is not unlikely. So he got, he got March and it was her anniversary. So that's means nothing to me at all. So next up is he's going to, he's going to set it up. He already knows there is a male that it's her husband she wants to hear from. So he says here, let me go back just a smidgen. 
birthday or anniversary, and they're making me feel like there's a it's husband. It's not anniversary. Okay, there's a husband or brother energy that's passed. Now, why do I say that? If I talk about people being above you, it's older. To your side would be like contemporaries, husband, wives, brothers, sisters, and below you would be younger. And I feel like I'm supposed to acknowledge that there's a male energy that's passed that's to the side, who I feel like if was sitting. Okay, so there you go. Her husband's the same age as her. He already knew he was going to get her husband. So what? That's not a hit. Now, I do want to point out that the person who told me to listen to this, this interview, who gave me this, told me that they're normally a skeptic, but thinks that this is this reading that John Edward did was so remarkable. He cannot see how he could possibly have known all this information, right? So this is only the second um, call that I've had um, listened to. But I expect this is the one that the person said that the it was just phenomenal. I think it's it because this is what the video is titled. The title of the video is Emotional. John Edward connects women with late husband. So I think this is the one they're saying. But I don't know because I haven't listened to any other parts of this video yet. Sitting next to me in the studio would be actually making fun of what I do. So I don't know. Yes. Well, and I have a symbol. I have a symbol for this because I was doing an event once, and there was a gentleman that came through, and he kept showing me me on crossing over, and him on the couch, like giving me the finger, oh, like and right. like making a fun of, yeah, a little bit, yeah. making making uh, a little bit, <laughs> so, totally one. And, and Caitlin, are there two kids connected to him, or is he one of two kids? He is one of three. So I, I, this either means one of two things to me: either there's two boys and a girl, like he's one of two. Or I'm supposed to say that there are two pregnancies connected to you where he's concerned or there's two kids? No, there's one kid, but he's one of two. Like, he's got a brother. Okay, so he's one of the two boys. Okay, whoopee-doo. So, <laughs> I looked it up, and this is one of the things I looked beforehand. How many, what is the average um, household, or what was I said? What did I look up? How many children do Australians typically have? What is the birth rate? Birth rate, that's what it was. And they said in the last few decades, it's pretty much held the same, 1.7 to 2. So 2, right? 1.7 to 2. Um, so him guessing there was two kids, he was either in a family of two kids or that he's had two kids. I'm very unimpressed. Can you see? This is my unimpressed face. All right. So uh, she goes and she makes it fit because you remember that these these sitters badly, badly, badly want this to happen. So John says, oh, well, it could be two kids and, and he's one of two. Well, what? <laughs> of course, he's one of at least two if there's three. So he's either. Okay, so if how would he have gotten this wrong, right? So if she had said he has two sisters and him, then John would have said, that's it. He wants to acknowledge the two sisters. But if she had said, no, he's one of three, but he's one of the brothers and there's a sister, then John did what he just did right now that, oh, well, he's acknowledging that he's one of two brothers. He's the part of the two brothers. Now, let's say there was three brothers. If the woman had said, oh, yeah, he's one of three boys, then I guess John would just answer, okay, that's what he's telling me. I have two brothers. There's no, there's no wrong answer here, right? It just sounds specific. Also, he doesn't really say it is your siblings or his siblings or your children. He says, how are two kids connected? Okay, because it's be nieces and nephews. It could be it could be the kids next door that are always at the house. It could be, you know, uh, two miscarriages. It could be a two. Uh, there's there's multiple multiple things you could do right there, right? Okay, so here we go. Yeah. Okay, and is his mom and dad still here? Because he's telling me to acknowledge his parents. Yes, they're oh, still here. Okay, and then happy birthday, Caitlin. Somebody's got a birthday that's coming up shortly. So they're making me feel My like... My son's birthday's on Sunday. Okay, because he's making me feel like there's a birthday that's coming up. Now, is, is is your son... Okay, again, how do you not know her that his parents are, are passed on? He's in communication with the guy right now. He's talking to him. How? Why would you ask that question? That's... 
you know why you asked that question? Because her voice sounds like she's in her 40s, 30s or 40s, right? So it's very likely her parents and his parents are still alive. That's just the odds. So it's an odd question to ask for a medium as professional as he is, who's so dialed in to this family's household that he knows all this information. It just is, it's, to me, it's a miss. When you have to ask a question that obvious, that's a miss. Um, and he says, happy birthday, Caitlin. And then he says, who's having a birthday? There's a, he wants me to acknowledge a birthday coming up. Well, again, what does that mean? Whose birthday? Can't he name a birthday? Doesn't he have a name? And he says, um, um, she says, it's my son's. And I've listened to that just that little bit several times and I cannot understand what she's saying. So her emotion is so strong. This is a very emotional a moment for her. She thinks she's communicating with her, her husband. She really does believe she is in communication with him through uh, John Edwards. Very cruel, very manipulative. Because remember your brain... Um, how we handle memory is that we don't, um, it's not like you put a, a play a, a record or a, <laughs> it's really dating myself. You play something on a song that's recorded and it always plays exactly the same. It never changes or a movie. It's always the same movie, right? That's not how memory works. The way memory works is it's constantly rewritten. And so whenever you start adding new elements to a story, you remember it that way. And it becomes really real. So you don't have to. So every time you relearn something like this, it's manipulating the memories you have. So these memories that supposedly he's getting are what she's going to reform in her mind that that's what her husband's saying. And so remember to keep in mind what is here and what is missing on this um, video. So the things that she's going to remember that he, apparently her husband thinks are special memories. But what about all those other memories that she thought were special but he doesn't seem to think so he didn't bring those up so keep that in mind also so it's her son's birthday coming up again i'm not impressed it could be it could be anybody's birthday coming up including his own hers parents grandparents family members who knows but she just hit on that her son's birthday is coming up and we don't know if it was next month next week tuesday i don't know we couldn't hear i couldn't understand it if you do hear it, please put it in the comments because I couldn't understand what they were saying. Son Michael? No, Michael is his brother. Okay, he wants me to make a really big deal about Michael, but I feel like I'm supposed to tell Michael, thank you for the shirt and hat. So I don't know if he ever <laughs> took his brother's shirt and hat and never gave it back, but I feel like thank you for the shirt and hat. I, that okay, so who's Michael? How many Michaels are in your life? Right? Okay. How many Michaels, if you think about the people around you who might have passed over? Oh, wait, this isn't somebody who's passed over. He isn't clear. He just says, who's Michael? He doesn't say who's Michael who's passed over. He doesn't say who's Michael who's still living until she acknowledges that Michael is his brother's name. But how common is the name Michael? Right? First name, middle name, um, male, female name. Very, very common. It could be uh, you know, one of my favorite places to eat, and I'm always dragging everybody there, is the uh, cantina, Michael's Cantina in Old Town Salinas. Come come, hang out with me. But if somebody said Michael to me, that's the first thing I would say. I have eaten there so many times, and I've had so many great memories at Michael's, and we eat there all the time with lots of friends. We always bring friends there because food is excellent. So if somebody said Michael's to me, I would think of a restaurant. But just so happens it hits her brother, brother-in-law. And borrowing clothes from your sibling, a shirt and a hat, how odd is that? From what I understand, I didn't have a sister I was very close to in, in age. Um, but from what I understand, siblings do that. They borrow each other's clothes all the time. I know I was always taking my dad's jackets and, and his big oversized shirts and wearing them when I was a kid. So I think that that's common. And keep in mind, John Edward, this is not his first reading. He's probably done hundreds of thousands of readings. I wouldn't be surprised. So the common tropes, the common things that seem like it's something specific to you are actually not that specific because it's probably a 
a cultural thing that it, he sees all over. I mean, he's talked to so many people that it's normal for somebody. He knows these things. These are not unusual things to come up in a conversation. So I, I don't think anything of that at all. That might be a personal message. And then where's yeah, the person? Okay. And then where's the person that's got the connection to either like a brain tumor, a brain accident, a brain injury? What's the brain issue? That's how he passed. Okay. He and had a um, accident and had a bleed on the brain. Okay. Now, we're and he's claiming that you were with him when he passed. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. And then when he passed, did you tell him, like, okay, so this is going to sound strange, but did you tell him, like, it's okay to go, but please don't go. Then it's okay to go. Then please don't go. Yes. Like, it's okay to go. And then please don't go. Okay. The feeling. Yep. Okay. So I just want you to know, Caitlin, he's making me feel like that's no different than you were when it came to picking food. Like, let's do this. Let's not do this. Let's do this. Let's not do this. Let's do this. Let's not do this. Oh my God. This guy's. So check out this woman crying. Look, this is emotional. If you really believe that you were in communication with a, a dead person, a dead person person is there think about how powerful it is i'd be doing a heck of a lot more than crying i would be like i, I can't even imagine i would ever leave the presence of john edward if i thought he was really communicating with anybody in the a dead person science would know this there would be every every wire in the head possible by every <laughs> every government would have that man wired up to something he would be the most powerful person in the world if he was communicating people with the dead, especially on something like this. Now, keep that in mind. This guy's on a, a radio show for the Kyle and Jackie O show. Well, that might be really prestigious. This ain't this ain't CIA or uh, MI5 level stuff, which is what would happen if he was really communicating with dead people. So don't downplay that. That's just silly. We're getting silly if we're going to say that this is real. OK, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get a little upset whenever I see these things because I feel like he's taken advantage of people. He's taken advantage of the grief of this woman. And this radio show is doing exactly the same thing. This radio show is, is selling itself, getting clicks by manipulating the memories of this woman's poor dead husband. And her grief is full on, full on for everybody to see. And we all smile and tear up and laugh or whatever at her behest well you know what i don't think it's i think it's cruel i think it's manipulative maybe you agree maybe you don't um so brain tumor brain injury brain accident so apparently he had an accident and then um the accident led to bleeding on the brain okay well i looked up and i saw that it is not one of the top causes of death to Australian males. Um, the number one is coronary heart disease. Then it's dementia, including Alzheimer's. Number three is lung cancer. And then the fourth is, I don't know how to say this word, cerebral vascular, which is bleeding on the brain. Okay. That could be from um, just a loss of blood to the brain, that kind of thing. And then the fifth is prostate cancer. And this is um, a from 2020 so i don't know where um covid comes in on there or um anything a pneumonia kind of thing but i would be surprised if it's supplanted some of these others so cerebral vascular disease could that be something tied to the brain or at least why he went to the brain why did you go to brain when you have a young woman's husband who's died I would think it would probably be more accidental and less like dementia or maybe heart or lung disease. I would I would gear it towards something for a younger man to die of because of just her age, right? Just from the sound of her voice. Also, they they have one son and he makes it sound like it's a young son. So they're probably in their 30s or maybe 40. So I don't know if um how he got the brain tumor brain accident brain injury it sounds specific but then again we also know that she called in and he knew the host at least knew that caitlin was going to be talking to her dead husband that's who she wanted to connect with so possibly they could have asked and how did he die and she said brain a brain problem also did he die of 
a um, from the brain injury when it was a motorcycle crash or a car crash. Do you see what I'm saying? If it's if he had said was did your husband die from an accident on a motorcycle? She would have said, "Yes, you're absolutely right." She wouldn't have said, "Oh no, it was a brain injury." See, if he had died in a car accident and his head hit the windshield because he didn't have a seatbelt on or whatever, or you know, it was crushed, she would have. And he said, "Who died from a car accident?" She would have said, "My husband died of a car accident." Uh, you know, here's what happened, and 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 she wouldn't have said. It was a cerebral, cerebral, a brain, a brain accident where, no. So depending on how John Edwards says it, she's reacting to it. You get my drift. Like if he had fallen out of a plane and his parachute didn't open um, and he died that way. Yes, his brain is probably crushed, right? Or if he jumped out of a building, sorry to be so graphic, but I mean, if something like that happens, it's a it's it is a brain injury right that's ultimately kind of i guess what does it but if he had said his parachute didn't open on a plane well i'd be much more impressed but um she would have said you're absolutely right that's what it was she wouldn't have said oh no it was because his brain he had a brain injury so she does say it was an accident to the brain so just saying that um this thing about is it okay to go? Then don't go. Then do go. And she doesn't make she doesn't make decisions well. That's just because John Edward is very good at. He's done a ton of these readings. He's talked to thousands of people, and so he knows how to. Um, you know, he's really good with his words, and he's probably used this line multiple times, and it always invokes some kind of a lev levity, some some laughter, and it kind of brings the mood down, makes the reading much more. Um, People are going to get more emotional from it because it just feels more loving and more personal. So again, it's, that doesn't mean anything to me at all. Okay, let's go on and see. We're getting close to being done. We'll see. The sense of humor is obviously resonating with Caitlin. This yeah. is without a doubt. He's talking to your 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 husband, right? Yeah, so it's like talking to him. Wait, wait, Ka Caitlin, can incredible. I ask you a question? He doesn't want me to call you Caitlin. So is that your real name or did you call it put a fake name? <laughs> on the phone to you i said if you're there tell him my nickname just <laughs> well i might not get your nickname but he's making me feel like don't call you that name um and th and again i like people to know why, why i said that so way back when when i first started doing this 34 and a half years ago now um i used to work at psychic fairs and they would walk up and give you a ticket with a name on it and somebody gave me the ticket and their name was on it and i threw it to the side and i said here's your name is whatever and the, the guy got startled and he goes i gave you a fake name and I was like, I don't really care what name you give me. The information is still going to come through. <laughs> so whenever I see that ticket, I now I now know that. Um, I don't know what this so is. This so. Okay. That was just a story he told. It doesn't mean anything at all. He could have totally made that up. He could have told that story a hundred times or a thousand times. It means nothing. Okay. So take that with a grain of salt. Also, earlier in this video, he talks about how he's, he's kind of been trained in um, the healthcare field, right? He, he was a phlebotomist, I think, for a while. I mean, that is healthcare. And also, he's a professional ballroom dancer. I think that's where he came from. So, so this isn't a medical doctor here. He's just saying these things, all right? But, um, well, okay, whatever. So here he goes and he says, what is your nickname? This is an Australian woman. I have many Australian friends. And one thing I know for sure is Australians never call things by what they're named they everything has a nickname and i'm not going to embarrass myself to try to give you some of them but anybody who knows anybody who's australian knows that everybody's got a nickname all objects have a nickname and besides it doesn't really matter most people in a couple they do have some sort of endearing nickname or um you know some kind of even even if they don't always call them that, they may call them something else. Or, you know, he might have called her Kate. Caitlin is kind of long. Um, so it could have been Kate or could have been um, Kat or Katie or who knows what. But the thing is, is John says, I don't think I'm going to get the nickname. You know what? 
darn right you're not going to get the nickname because you're not psychic. Otherwise, you would have given us the nickname. Right? She said, if this is real, please give me my nickname. And he says, I can't give you your nickname. Basically, he's saying he doesn't want me to say it here. That's all she wanted. Give me your my nickname. And he can't get it. Why? Because he's not psychic. And he says, um, uh, what was the other thing? Something like there was one more thing. So what is your nickname? Oh, she says, it feels like I am talking to him right now. I bet she does. This is highly emotional. You can hear her crying. Again, he's playing on her on her vulnerable vulnerabilities. She's extremely vulnerable right now. She's extremely willing to say anything to keep the reading going. So if he was to offer something that wasn't quite right, she's going to say yes to it. Because if she starts saying no, then he's going to end the reading. He's going to say, oh, it must be the other person in the other room. It must be one of the hosts. Oh, I'm sorry. That was so wonderful that I did uh, connect to your husband. Time to go. But as long as she can keep him talking, he's going to continue talking to her husband. And maybe, you know, she's got to kind of like, you know, give a little bit, be generous with some of the hits. So you can't always trust to what the person on the line is saying is genuine when we know that they have such a strong motive to try to um, keep the reading going and to agree. Like I said, this is a highly emotional moment. All right, here we go. Hang on, so then say he shows you, he shows you that yeah, ticket, I so you know, right. fake it's, name. It's kind of like a tarot card, right? You know, tarot yeah. card has a meaning and then you go from there. I don't know, if I go into your house where you live, if I go to the kitchen, if I come out of your bedroom into the like main area and like go to your left, is that where your kitchen is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Why is he telling Jesus. me to? Why is he telling me to talk about a cactus, or some type of like fake green little? I'm gonna call it a cactus. So let's let's just some green little plant. Is there some green little plant thing in your kitchen? Oh, hopefully he hasn't found your stash, Caitlin. By the sound of it. <laughs> no, I mean there's not now. I I try to grow plants and it just doesn't work. I killed a bonsai in here. Okay, so that to me would be the green little plant. So your okay. your green little plant that's there. Okay, well you. Okay, no said okay kitchen on the left whoopie do it's either on your left it's all on your right or it's straight ahead when you come out of your bathroom or maybe behind you so odds are one in four that he would get it right if she is telling the truth she might have been confused she might have been highly emotional and just said yes because she wants to keep going with the reading who cares your husband hasn't mentioned her nickname he hasn't even said his own name or his parents' names, or their child's name. But he's going to tell you where the kitchen is? You don't think she knows where the kitchen is? Okay. That's not how it works, is it? And this cactus plant thing that may be fake in the kitchen, what are the odds you're going to have a little green plant in your kitchen? I probably have six. Almost everybody I know has a little plant in their kitchen. And, and he even gives it a cactus or a fake green thing. Maybe it's a chia pet. I don't know. And she says, no. She says, there's none. Not now, she says, whatever that means. Was it there when he was alive or what? It doesn't mean. She says, I killed a bonsai plant. And he goes, oh, that's what he's telling me. That's what he means. Really? Her husband is talking about a bonsai tree that she killed. What is he? Is it in heaven with him? Susan's getting snarky. Sorry. <laughs> you guys together for four years? No, we've been together for just under 10. Okay, so he wants me to talk about the shift that changed four years in, no, four years ago. How long has he gone? Uh, 12 months, Monday. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is okay. So you're in the first year of loss. So here's what yeah. I need you to know. Four years ago is where your relationship takes a turn. So whatever happened four years ago, he's highlighting that as the fork in the road for me. But he's making he's making me feel like highlight that in a big way. The other thing is we got engaged. Okay. He's also oh, telling me to talk about the um Okay. That's a miss. 
he says, have you been together four years? And she says, no, we've been together 10 years. There's a big difference between four and 10. Now she says, we got engaged four years ago. So, so in other words, she's trying to retrofit it because he says something important happened four years ago. I bet you something important happened three years ago, five years ago, nine years ago, six years ago. Every year, something important happened that would have been a hit for her, should he have said six years, five years, seven years. Every one of those would have been a hit for her. We got married. We had a child. We met. We got engaged. We bought a house. We moved from one place to the other. There's always going to, we got our, our, our dog. There's always going to be some special mention like, and he says, it's a fork in the road. He's just making that up. He's just playing odds. It's not right. And he fails at that, obviously, at four years. How long has he been gone? Why doesn't he just ask? How, how would you not know? That's like basic, right? He's talking to a dead person who's telling him about brain tumors or whatever he's doing or brain accidents. How would you, why would he ask? just so strange it's almost like he doesn't know it's almost like john edward is just making this up right did you guys go scuba diving or snorkeling or something um we've been snorkeling but i mean i don't know <laughs> where's the where's the place that somebody had to like dive down and grab something under a cave or under a like like we're it's not spelunking like in, I'm in water, so I need to go underneath something, like under, under. I have no idea. Okay, I want you to remember this, okay, because I don't know what this is, so I don't have a symbol okay. for this. I feel like I'm underwater, either snorkeling or scuba diving, but I'm going under coral to look for something, and I feel like there's some okay. type of moment of this. So like if somebody has a photo of this, maybe he did this with his family, and this is going to be validation for them that like this is really him. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then. That's a miss, right? If it had been a hit, it would have been a pretty big hit. It would have felt really big. But how big of a hit really would it be? This is Australia. These are not people living in the outback. They're probably, you know, we don't know. Are they in Brisbane? Are they in Sydney? Are they in Melbourne? Is, it, is she in Tasmania? It's surrounded by water. It's an island. Um, Brisbane is... Um, and and right in that whole area over there. Oh my gosh, I've been there. It's beautiful. It's known for their amazing beaches. There are coral reefs. They have this giant coral reef out there that everybody goes out and does scuba diving and right and goes down and looks in, into the the coral reefs. And you would think that if you lived in that area, and I don't know where the show is, so maybe it's in Brisbane. I, I'm, no, it looks like it could be Sydney. It's hard to say because you can see the Sydney Opera House, but it doesn't mean anything because they all have beaches all over the place. Um, the big me metropolitan built, um, places are on right on the edge of the continent. And so people do that. They go in the water. It's common. But it was a miss. It was a huge miss. But it would have been spectacular if he got it it's just again throwing spaghetti at the wall something might stick he played the odds and he failed she didn't know anything about it she's oh yeah i guess we've been scuba diving once or something but it meant nothing so he just plays it off like oh well maybe you'll find a photograph of me uh, of him when he was younger scuba diving or something or it meant something to him or maybe he wanted to go scuba diving or maybe he loves scuba diving movies or maybe it's a miss Okay, it's done. Now we're very close to being towards the Then the last thing I'm going to say is besides Michael, he wants me to talk about either the J name like Joe or the J name like Joanne. Who's the J name like Joe? Um, uh, I don't know. Okay, just remember when he they give me... a friend named James, but that's all I can think of. No, nah, I don't think it's James. Um, if you can, just remember that I'm saying this. Here's the thing. What stuff doesn't make sense, I always say that it's probably me misinterpreting, not him. Yep. Um, just know that he's good. He will be watching over, you know, your children, the, the child, but there will be other kids. So I'm letting you know that now in advance. And then last thing I want to say is this. You're in the first year of loss. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to end that there because he goes on for quite a few minutes about talking about how amazing, um, how important it is to... Uh, for his son to, or his child, we we don't we never I don't think we ever decided is maybe we did decide it was a male, 
I think he mentions that if they should, you know, how he should rec- remember his father and it's all platitudes, all things that you want to be real, all things that are amazing. Um, he's not going to tell her anything negative, of course, you know, maybe they'll end up being some kind of tragedy that's going to happen to their family, but he's not going to tell her about it right now because he's not psychic. Um, so it's John Edward is known for his throwing out of the alphabets. This is the alphabet guy. Um, I'm getting a J. Where's the J name? And it's almost always J or M, right? Because those are pretty common names, first names for for uh, Western and Western culture. Probably a lot of other cultures too. But um, Joe or Joanne hands up everybody who has a Joe or Joanne in their family that is passed on. Oh, he didn't say passed on, did he? That pretty much broadens it again. Joe or Joanne living or dead or a Janie. I'm surprised she couldn't come up with anything other than his friend named James, but he was throwing it out there. That was just, okay, come on, really? So, and then he throws in the last, there will be other kids. She doesn't say anything. In other words, you're going to have more kids. And I, I find all that just manipulative. He's So here's this woman. In the first year, her husband's going to be uh, dead a year as of this upcoming Monday, apparently, when this happened. And she's probably of childbearing years. I don't know. We don't know. Is she likely to find somebody else? He's just trying to tell her, move on, find somebody else to some extent and have more kids. What, what would it mean if she has no more children, if she tries to have children and she can't, you know, she's infertile? Or maybe her tubes have been tied. I mean, the average Australian has two children. So maybe she had her tubes tied. Maybe she can't have any more. Would it be a failure? You see what I'm saying? It's not. It might sound good on the radio right now. That, oh, we're going to have a more life. You're going to move on with your life. And you're going to have more baby, another baby. And everything's going to be wonderful and sunshine and and, and rainbows and unicorns are going to come down and, and rain candy all over you or whatever. But again, it's not. It's not true. He's making this up. He's playing the odds and he's just saying whatever he can to make this show at this moment look good to get hits. Because they go on and say a little bit later to go to Ticketmaster because he's going to be, you know, they plug his show that's going to be happening later. So, you know, I blame John Edward, but almost more than John Edward, I blame the hosts. They're just totally uncritical. I mean, they just buy in at hook, line, and sinker. Absolutely no skepticism. And even the mention of skeptics, they're like rolling their eyes. Oh, it's like a skeptic, huh? I mean, how dare they? Susan, bring it in. Bring it in, Susan. <laughs> so let's end this. Let's end this. I might do a third video. Let's see, because I think there might be one or two more videos coming up, more readings. So what is missing? Did you, did, is there something missing that I missed and what is missing out of this completely? He didn't get anybody's name. No, he didn't mention the child. Didn't mention anything about the child. He didn't mention anybody's names. He didn't mention his wife's nickname. He threw stuff out there. If somebody's name is Joe, that would have been wonderful, but there wasn't there. So we don't got anything. I would give him a may I'd give him maybe a one at a score of one to ten, maybe for being accurate. And the only thing I would hit on is that there was something to do with the brain. But as I explained to you guys, it didn't mean it was a brain. It could have been just it could have been something to do with the brain, but not necessarily the cause of the accident, depending on how he worded it, is would how would be how it would do that. He got Michael, but as I said, who doesn't have a Michael in their life somewhere, living or dead. Um, even though the kitchen was on the left, as you walk out of the bedroom, maybe he knew that. This is the world's number one psychic living right now, him and Teresa Caputo. What do you think? Is he communicating with the dead? Or is he just manipulating a poor widow's memories of her husband? The clicks, 
the ticket sales at Ticketmaster. As always, put your comments in the in the feed. If you like this video, please let me know. I'm sorry it goes as long as it does. It's kind of hard to get through the whole thing. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you all.